Today we're going to build and install a wireless plug for my dust collection system. Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. Today we are here in the garage and I have a super exciting project for you all. We are going to build this wireless electrical receptacle that I am using to control my dust collection system, but you can use it to control just about anything that you want in your house. It is very easy to do and it is very inexpensive. So I had many fits and starts throughout this project. I planned to do it one particular way and it didn't quite work out, which you will see in the build montage video. And I pivoted, I did an alternate way of doing it, which is a little bit more complicated, but in the end, it actually worked out way better than I could have possibly imagined. So let's go ahead and cut over to the build. I'll narrate what I was up to, tell you where I kind of failed, <laughs> and tell you how we recovered, and that ultimately you end up with this beautiful wireless controlled electrical receptacle. All right, let's go ahead and cut over to the montage. Some of the items you will need for this project include the wireless plug, a receptacle, the box, some wire, a plug, a faceplate, a knife, another knife, a screwdriver, and a pair of electrical pliers. I started the project by unboxing everything and taking it out of its bags. I tried to dry fit the switch here into the box and that's when I realized it had tabs on the end that needed to be removed. And then I needed a hole in the box for the wire for the switch. It was at this moment when I realized that the wireless switch would not fit into the box with the receptacle in place. So I started devising mechanisms to open up the bottom a little bit to allow the wireless switch to fit neatly into the bottom of the box. So I used the pliers and a knife to cut away a little bit of the bottom here to expose it so I could slide the wireless switch in very neatly and then get the receptacle in. I started wiring up the switch and the receptacle using solid core Romex wire and it was right around this point where I really started regretting my choice of using the Romex rather than some sort of stranded wire that was easier to use and more flexible. But I pressed on, I thought I could get it to work without too much of a problem. After fitting the wireless switch into the bottom, I hot glued it into place, at which point in time I realized that I did not leave a hole to allow programming of the wireless switch to the remote controls. So I used the drill and a knife to cut a hole in, and then I re-hot glued the switch into place. I finished the project by screwing the receptacle into place and then attaching the plug onto the end of the Romex. Now this particular plug that I purchased was pretty janky and very low quality and I certainly would not recommend it and I regretted using it the moment I started installing it, which will lead us to the next phase of this project. Did ultimately get it together, get the faceplate put on. I plugged the switch in here and I programmed the wireless controllers following the instructions. It was very straightforward. To test it, I uh, plugged in a heat gun that I had and gave it a couple runs and it worked magically. This is the final project with the bottom ripped out. It looks super janky and I was completely not happy with the way that it turned out. So I decided to sleep on it over the night and I woke up with an epiphany and I decided to go in a completely different direction. In the morning, I jumped into Fusion 360 to design my own receptacle box, which is what you see here. It is a relatively simple rectangle with some tabs on the side that I could use to mount the box to the wall. And then some mounting holes on the top as well, which is where you screw in the receptacle. The advantage here is that I could customize the holes for the antenna, for the power outlet, and for the programming port so they were exactly where they needed to be when I finally printed the box. And so this is my Prusa going to town, printing it in the Prusa Orange Pet G, which is my new favorite filament. Here I am removing the box from the print bed uh, the next day after it cooled. I'm using a little screwdriver here and a paint scraper to get under the device to peel it free. 
I've learned to not force these things as I've drawn enough blood from my hand. So I'm scraping the bottom off a little bit from the glue, and then we'll get to the assembly part here. Start by taking the previous Frankenstein module apart, removing the receptacle and removing the janky plug that I recommend against purchasing. <laughs> it took me a little bit to get the wireless plug out of the receptacle box because I used quite a lot of hot glue to hold it into place. To start the fresh new build, I got a appliance extension cord, which is a regular extension cord with one end having bare wires and the other end having the plug. So I got a 20 amp extension cord that is made from stranded wire, which really made the installation a lot easier. So I used some spade connectors on the end of the extension cord and attached it to the wireless plug. Put a little hot glue down here on the bottom. I pushed the plug down and held it into place until it was secure. And then I attached the ground wire for the receptacle. It was right around this point where I realized that the receptacle was actually turned around backwards. So I had to pull the entire thing out, rotate it around and then screw it into place. No big deal. I attached the face plate and then we are off to the races. I plugged it in, thought for a minute, I found a trusty video lamp laying by, plugged it in, turned it on, everything worked fine, so we were good to go. I took the receptacle into the garage and I secured it to the wall with one and five eighths inch drywall screws. Now there happens to be a piece of plywood behind the area that I was screwing into, so I didn't need any sort of special mounting holes or anything. Put the face plate on, did a little bit of wire management to clean things up a little bit, and I plugged it into the receptacle and then tried it out. That was the video. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun to make and it was definitely a needed upgrade for my garage. So if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing ringing that bell, very important these days. If you're not already following me on Instagram, please consider doing so. That's where I post pictures of projects like this that become future videos. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, maybe perhaps give it a thumbs up, but leave your comments down below. Tell us why, and we can make future videos better. All right, thank you so much for getting this far. Thank you for watching the video, and don't forget to be inspired. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, please consider get her. <clears throat> oh no.